many tree species look absolutely beautiful due to their shape, their color, and their size. But today, we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the most beautiful and colorful trees in the world. Number 15, the Tibetan Cherry Tree. Tibet is a country known for having some of the world's highest mountains, but as it turns out, it also has one of the world's most beautiful trees, known as the Tibetan Cherry Tree. This species' leaves aren't all that colorful, but it more than makes up for this with its indescribable bark. More specifically, it's translucent, reddish-brown, and when the sun hits it, it looks very similar to shined bronze or copper. This effect becomes magnified in late April, when the trees temporarily bloom with white flowers that contrast starkly with the darker bark of the tree. So, I think you'd agree that this Tibetan cherry tree is truly a sight to behold. Number 14. Wisteria While the wisteria may look a lot like a willow, this whimsical tree is an entirely different species that is a whole lot more colorful. Native to both Asia and eastern North America, the wisteria can grow to heights of up to 9 meters and grow to widths of up to 18 meters. And while it stands apart due to its drooping flowers, generally coming in white, lilac, purple, and pink, they tend to completely coat their branches in these flowers to create a canopy effect that looks like something right out of a fantasy novel. Partially due to it technically being a woody vine, it's both very hardy and fast-growing as it generally takes only three to five years for the wisteria to flower and can grow by as much as three meters in just a single year. So the wisteria truly is a remarkable species. Number 13, the Golden Ginkgo. While this famous tree is located all the way out in northwestern China, it truly is a treat for anyone willing to make the trek to visit it. Found high up in the Zongnan Mountains, the Golden Ginkgo is located on the grounds of the Guguanyin Buddhist Temple, which is one of the largest Buddhist temples in the region. Reportedly planted about 1400 years ago during the Tang Dynasty, it stands apart thanks to the beautiful gold leaves. And when they naturally fall every autumn, they create a blanket of gold that surrounds it like a fairy tale ocean. In fact, the effect is so incredible that as many as 60,000 people visit over a 20 day window just to see the leaves falling. And if you're a lover of nature, it's certainly worth the trip to make. Number 12, the Jacarandas tree. While the dripping blue petals of the jacarandas may look like they were plucked straight from a fairy tale, they are in fact very real. Endemic to South and Central America, these trees are well known for their attractive and long-lasting violet-colored flowers, and as a result they've been planted in a variety of hot foreign climates, such as the Southern United States, Southern Europe, South Africa, and Australia. In terms of height, they can become up to 20 meters tall, with each flower being up to 5 centimeters long and thus when fully in bloom, they look absolutely incredible. In terms of their lifespan, they can live for up to 200 years, and so long as they're not hit by frost, it's very plausible for them to reach this ripe old age. Yet given the fact that the Jacarandas tree is considered to be a vulnerable species in its native region, it's probably for the best that they have been exported abroad. Number 11, the Japanese Cherry Blossom. Japan is well known for its storied history, modern cities, and unique culture. But when it comes to natural beauty, one of its greatest contributions is the Japanese cherry blossom. While the species grows naturally in China and Korea as well, it is in Japan that it gets its most attention, as it's here that several different varieties of Japanese cherry trees have been developed via selective breeding. And while each Japanese cherry blossom species is different, what makes them stand out is their appearance in the springtime, where their branches blossom with brilliant pink, red, white, or even green flowers, while producing less than brilliant bitter sakurambo fruit. In any case, walking through a grove of Japanese cherries after they blossom is an incredible experience, and it comes as little surprise that these trees are used as ornamental decorations in homes, gardens, parks, and schools across the earth. Number 10, spider trees. While the spider trees of Pakistan may be very temporary and very strange, it's not hard to see how they, in their own strange way, were also quite beautiful. You see, in the latter half of 2010, unprecedented large floods swept the country, managing to not only uproot the lives of about 20 million people, but also uproot the lives of the local arachnid populations. With more than a fifth of the country submerged, millions of spiders climbed into the trees to escape the rising floodwaters, and due to the long length of time they were forced to stay there, they began to spin massive webs around local trees. 
This completely cocooned them in spider silk, and while they led to the creation of strange, wispy-looking trees, they also had an unexpected positive side effect. It's because the large amount of spiders in the trees effectively decimated local mosquito populations, causing rates of mosquito-borne illnesses such as malaria to be very low, despite the large amounts of sitting water. So, while Pakistan's spider trees may have been strange, they were also super useful. Number 9. The Flamboyant Tree If you want a tree that's loud and proud, then the flamboyant tree is the perfect species for you. While it's native to Madagascar, it's been planted in tropical locations around the world. And given its bright colors, it's not hard to see why people did that. Unlike most species, they only flower in mild to severe drought-like conditions, as they can actually suffer from root rot if the soil gets too wet. However, flamboyant trees are also well-equipped to deal with colder temperatures, because they are deciduous, and while they have bright red flowers that bloom in the summer, their leaves fall off in the winter. As an added survival measure, they also tend to grow wider than they are tall, as this allows them to stay grounded when winds are high or when tropical cyclones make landfall. If that wasn't enough, they also bear fruit that's very attractive to iguanas, and reportedly the fruit is so vibrant that it makes their droppings a bright orange color. So it's fair to say that the flamboyant tree can brighten up anyone's day. Number 8. The Nat Geo Japanese Maple while the Japanese cherry blossoms may be one of Japan's most famous trees, the Japanese maple may be even more popular than its cool cousin. Native to Japan, Korea, China, Eastern Mongolia, and Southeastern Russia, the trees are known for their distinct leaves and often nonconformist shape. While there are plenty of Japanese maples out there, the one featured by National Geographic as Photo of the Month for July of 2012 is certainly a standout. Located in Portland, Oregon's Portland Japanese Garden, the aptly named Tree of Life photo perfectly encapsulates its beauty, as it features long, winding branches and a beautiful spectrum of yellow, orange, and red leaves, and lush surroundings that really accentuate its beauty. It was first planted in the garden in 1968 when the tree was about 20 years old, and while no one is really certain of its origins, it was lightly taken from a local residence and then added to the park. Over the years, it grew into the two and a half meter tall beauty that it is today, and it's partially thanks to the fame of this photograph that it regularly receives a large stream of visitors. Number 7. The Rainbow Eucalyptus While eucalyptus trees are best known for being the home base of the lovable Australian koala, the rainbow variety of this tree is well known for its entirely different reason. Unlike every other tree of its species, it's the only eucalyptus that's indigenous to the northern hemisphere, as it's native to the tropical forests of the Philippines, New Guinea, and Indonesia. Growing to heights of up to 75 meters, its main claim to fame is its striped multicolored bark, which appears in streaks of pale green, red, orange, gray, and purplish brown. The effect created by the bark is quite fascinating because as different layers fall off, the effect created is of a multicolored crayon scratch drawing atop a black surface. Beyond its beautifully colored bark, the rainbow eucalyptus is, rather ironically, often used to create plain white paper. This is because the rainbow eucalyptus is an excellent source for pulpwood, which is the main ingredient in paper, and it's become a dominant species in pulpwood plantations due to the fact that it's both naturally resistant to pests and diseases and grows by as much as one meter per year. But you'd probably agree with me that it's truly a shame for a tree of such beauty to be used in this way. Number 6. The Aspen Pando Now, Generally speaking, a tree will grow in a solitary state, but there are some aspens that do things a little differently. That's because rather than remain in one place, their roots all interconnect to create one giant living organism. Known as Pando, this massive tree was first classified in 1976 by Jerry Kemperman and Burton Barnes, and after some measurements in 1992, it was estimated that it was the heaviest living organism on Earth, as it likely comes in at about 6 million kilograms and spans across a 46-acre plot of land. And while trees that inhabit it come and go, the organism itself is thought to be ancient, as its underground root system is likely about 16,000 years old. Now, if you'd like to visit this incredible organism yourself, you're going to have to trek out to Fish Lake National Park in south-central Utah. And while you can certainly see the Aspen Pando if you go soon, 
there's a very real chance that it will not be around forever. This is because drought, human development, grazing, and fire suppression have impacted Pando's well-being. Of these, the threat of grazing is the most severe, and ever since the 1980s, the areas in and around the Pando were eaten up by mule deer, elk, and domestic cattle, with this being a problem because it has prevented Pando from developing enough young stems to fully replace existing older stems as they die. So, unless this problem's met with some protective measures, the Pando may begin a slow and painful decline. Number 5. Cannonball Tree when it comes to trees, few are quite as unique as the cannibal tree. Found in the tropical forests of Central and South America, it's a soft-wooded relative of the Brazil nut family and grows to heights of about 25 meters, making it pretty large. However, beyond its size, what really sets it apart from many other trees is the fact that its seeds and flowers don't grow out from its branches, but from its trunk. In terms of its seeds, they're hard brown shells that look a little bit like non-hairy coconuts. Once they fall, they generally crack open and reveal both a fruit and as many as 500 seeds inside. These are dispersed by scavengers who eat the fruits, and while it's technically possible for humans to eat them, their bad smell causes most to avoid it, despite its delicious taste. Beyond the seeds, the tree also stands apart for having brilliant red and white flowers that not only look striking, but also apparently smell really good. As a result of its incredible looks, it's been grown in many Hindu temples, and many believe that a cannonball tree's hooded flower looks like the Naga, which are a race of half-serpent and half-human beings from Hindu scripture. The cannonball tree also stands apart for its non-aesthetic reasons, as parts of the plant have been used in traditional medicine to treat hypertension, tumors, pain, inflammation, the common cold, stomach aches, skin conditions, and malaria. And while the efficacy of these traditional treatments is questionable at best, I'd say that the cannibal tree is pretty incredible. Number 4. The Ladysmith Rhododendron While there are thousands of rhododendron species and millions of rhododendron plants out there, one of the few that has managed to grow to an incredibly large size is the Ladysmith Rhododendron. Hailing from the town of Ladysmith on Canada's Vancouver Island, the Ladysmith Rhododendron is technically a shrub and not a tree, but despite this, its size and colorfulness gives it a well-deserved spot on this list. This Rhododendron is believed to be about 120 to 125 years old, with most speculating that it was either shipped from the UK in the late 1800s or early 1900s, or that it's a clone grown from a Rhododendron branch from the nearby city of Victoria's Beacon Hill Park. Regardless of its origins, it went viral in 2017 due to it being more than 9 meters tall, 8 meters wide, and went in full bloom in May, filled with more than 4,000 pink blossoms. And while it's picked up the nickname the Lady Cynthia and is a cultural and natural landmark of the town, its humongous size unfortunately led to its downfall. This is because on December 20th of 2018, a devastating winter storm severely damaged two of the three stalks of the Lady Cynthia, with it likely being the case that the tree's weight caused these stalks to snap under the increased pressure. This forced botanists to begin restoration efforts on the two damaged branches so that they could once again take root and prune the third remaining one so that Lady Cynthia could bear its own weight. And while there's still no word on whether or not these efforts were successful, for the sake of the town of Lady Smith, I hope that they were. Number 3. Socotra Dragonblood Tree While Yemen may not be the safest place to vacation to right now, if you take a boat off the mainland to the island of Socotra, you can see one of the most beautiful tree species on the planet. Known as the Dragon's Blood Tree, it's endemic to the island and is well known for its upturned, densely packed crown that looks pretty similar to an umbrella. They're known to live for upwards of 600 years, and while they look incredible, one of their most interesting features is their dark red resin. It's better known as Dragon's Blood, this resin is known for having incredible medicinal properties, as it's considered to be a cure-all for ailments such as fevers, cuts, diarrhea, ulcers, and dysentery. Yet, beyond the medicinal realm, it achieved widespread use as a red dye in high-end manufacturing circles, with the intense red color of the legendary cultural treasures such as Stradivarius violins reportedly being dyed with the sap from this tree. And while this may make the sap a cultural treasure, in the eyes of many, it's disposable. And because the island of Socotra is starting to create a large industrial and tourism sector, this has caused many of these trees to be chopped down in order to make way for these new developments. 
This has been made worse by the fact that the land these trees are on is often so slow to regenerate, and increased cattle grazing across the land has made it difficult for young trees to take root. In response, the unique flora and fauna of Socotra has been deemed as a World Heritage Site and a Global 200 Eco Region. However, whether or not this will lead to significant protection in the future is yet to be seen. Number 2. Redwood Okay, when it comes to height, no tree can grow quite as tall as a redwood. They're found on the west coast of Florida and British Columbia. These trees can easily grow to heights of over 100 meters, with the world's largest tree being a redwood by the name of Hyperion that measures in at an incredible 115.7 meters tall. However, their length is complemented by their width, and they can have a diameter of up to 7 meters, and when combined with their height, just a single tree can produce as much as 725,000 kilograms of wood. To top this off, these trees seem to have unlocked the key to near immortality, as they can live for up to 2,000 years. This is largely attributed to the fact that they have high amounts of tannins, which are contained in the tree's bark and help increase its resistance to pests and diseases to help ward off insects like termites and protect it from fungal pathogens. Redwoods truly are some of the hardiest trees around. However, despite this, they rely on some pretty specific environmental conditions to remain in this tip-top shape. More specifically, they thrive in moderate coastal climates that have heavy and frequent fogs coming from the coast in order to stave off dry spells and drought. Redwoods also require an abundant amount of water, and since they get all that water from rain rather than melted snow, they need consistent rainfall throughout the year with this sometimes being generated by the redwoods themselves due to them having the ability to create rain via a process where they trap fog and make clouds within their branches. Yet while these conditions may sound specific, when everything is in line, they are, by and large, one of the fastest growers and taller showers in the tree world. Number 1. The Oyamel Fir Tree When it comes to colorful trees, few are quite as special as the Oyamel Fir Tree. That's because while they spend about half of the year as plain, green trees, during the fall and winter months they become absolutely covered with orange and black monarch butterflies. Now, these trees have the scientific name Abies religiosa due to the fact that their narrow cone tips resemble hands clasped in prayer. In terms of location, they're generally found high up in the cloud forests of central and southern Mexico at altitudes of between 2100 and 4100 meters. This means that they experience very dry winters. This puts them in the near-perfect place for monarch butterflies to hibernate, and every year the majority of monarchs make their way over to Monarch Biosphere Reserve in the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt in order to ride out the winter. When this happens, these trees are absolutely covered with those butterflies, making them colorful sentinels in the otherwise green cloud forest. And while this yearly migration is incredible, it's unfortunately in danger of ending in the near future. In the past, about 1 billion butterflies would make their way over to the reserve, but in recent years that number has been closer to about 33 million. This sharp 96% decline has largely been the result of deforestation of the OML fir trees in Mexico and the loss of the milkweeds they raise their caterpillars on in the United States and Canada. Yet in recent years, climate change has also become a massive concern. This is because it threatens to make the conditions too hot and dry for the OML fir to both survive and produce seeds. And it's because of this that urgent measures have been taken by environmental groups to save these trees. However, only time will tell whether or not these efforts will be effective. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.